So today, in the beautiful city of Anambra State, the, the commissioning of uh, the governor actually commissioned the Emeka and Bumi Foundation in Oriaku in the city of Anambra State today. Well, a lot of dignitaries, royal fathers, politicians of all kind, um, clergymen, and all of that were all present at the foundation. And yes, it was honorably commission today and yes it became something magnificent the moment page e peter ob stepped his foot in the event center where this whole uh, commissioning was happening and a lot of people went wow he came in quietly sat behind the back and you know they had to just notice a great personality in their midst and the immediately they had to call him to the front side where he sat with the royal fathers the governor and every other person it was even the governor himself who noticed him here's the video don't forget to subscribe drop a comment comment i can feel indeed benefiting including my own dear sister solution master okay like i said Eight years in Abia, well, and I'm proud of you.
composing a toast. And I think he will do justice. I won't comment right on that. But all I can say is that for me, uh, whenever I see him, and I tell him this always, uh, when I grow up, I want to look like him. <laughs> um, the last we met, he gave me some tips. Uh, he, he did some of his exercise routine uh, for me, and uh, I took them, and he does that in the bedroom every day. And uh, by the time he finished and was about to sit down, my chief of staff walked in and I told him he missed a lifetime coaching. What I would do tutorial for him. Uh, and as he at 91, very much, almost, I think the MC um, said it very correctly. The mind as sharp as razor, razor sharp. And uh, in terms of health and so on, I don't know. It can only be, they say, the grace of God and lifestyle. Um, I said to him, maybe that lecture that I had, um, I think the greater part of the world need that lecture. And we'll take the tips from this. And my wife has this uh, idea of uh, healthy living. Um, but I think any of the farmers, if I can now be any time in the fact that I've been interview, you can do also so much that this healthy living. You are unhealthy living men. Without God, we've come to give God the glory and thank God for his life. That he served not just our people, but he served the world. Served the entire 54 member nations of the Commonwealth. And um, gloriously, I know he had a short stick as Nigeria's foreign minister on that Shagari's uh, second uh, term, shortly before the military coup, before he returned there to become the second term of the Commonwealth. But everything put together, this is one of those, uh, you know, we don't celebrate our heroes enough. And I am one of those who preach about a fervent combat to this whole philosophy of befitting living and descent. Funeral. And we are seeing this befitting living in his public service. And I want to speak to it. It's not just that it's 91 and counting. And I know with him that which is in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. You know, I don't believe the word in the sun that talks 70 and then uh, 80. That one is somebody who was happy, you know, you were just, uh, you know, singing their song and saying that one. The one I believe is the one in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. It says, My spirit shall not abide in man forever. His days shall be 120. Uh, <laughs> That one, but you know, that was said then when life was very short and brutish. That then was uh, and when we're all the dead, and more of the kind of um, healthy living and exercise routine. There are there's a uh, menu of uh, exercise and everything in moderation. With the technology today and with this lifestyle, uh, there's a uh, the queen of one, uh, 150. <laughs> That is that he has lived a life of impact, a life devoted for public purpose. Because it's not just how long, but how well and for what purpose. And as he has lived a life for public purpose, listening to the song and listening to the director of this particular center, you can summarize the entire thing. This is a life devoted not for himself and about himself, but a life for what?
public purpose and life for others to make society better. And there is no better way to sum it all than this particular centre that we have come to commission today. You know, this part of the world is not very common. We don't celebrate the internet, we don't think, you know, people doing research and finding things. And if I say, all right, who are you feeding them? You know, I say, what do you mean by research? What do you mean by research? Research, just the damn book, everybody is in the damn book. And that takes me to my personal experience and why I appreciate this deeply. It's personal to me. January 91, I was at the Brookings Institution there. If you check it out, Brookings Institution is reputed to be like, like the world's uh, number one thing now. It was then called the oldest, the biggest, and the most prestigious independent thing that in the world. Then they were celebrating their 75th anniversary. And the caption then was 75 years of thinking the future. And this is why what the director just said, all what he said about several years to come struck, it struck me. And in that celebration, the history is such that one man, Paul Robert S. Brookings set up, he just looked at the way government functioned and thought that, that was, it was necessary to have independent input into the process of government decision making. And decided first to found the Institute of Government, the Center for Government, and the other one for Economy, and so on. And in 1916, decided to match the two into the Robert. I mean, uh, the Brookings Institution. And so by 91, they were celebrating their 75th anniversary. And they're still going. Without himself and the wife, Isabella, he died before the wife. The wife later died uh, herself. But they were multi millionaires. And this is what brings a context to this. Multi millionaires, they decided to bequeath everything they had as endowment for that Brokers Institution. And the Brokers Institution remained, if you like, you know, in the US you have two main parties the Republicans and the Democrats. The Democratic Party, that's more like their home, the think tank. When I was there, the Henry Aaron was the Secretary for Health and Human Services to um, President Carter. The Charles Shaw who was the chair of his Council of Economic Advisors. That was the people that invited me to get to Brookings. So they live from there, from democratic government, and they end up in Brookings. And then from Brookings also, they recruit them, the technocrats that work in various hands of the democratic government. And you see this symbiotic relationship between this independent think tank and governance their endowment has grown to a level that even if they raise no fund, the institution can run on its own permanently. And this is what brings me to one point that I played with um, our chief, um, which is that it is how that contacts and networks will begin to think about the sustainability of this institution. Um, <laughs> Themselves an endowment fund, an endowment that you know whether anything they raise current flows, um, the institution will continue to run. I know I derived quite a lot of inspiration from that. That led me in 2000 to incorporate an institution in Enugu, the African Institute for Applied Economics, and we started in 2001. 2002, we brought in the Nobel laureate, uh, Joe Stiglitz, um, to deliver the first Pilots of Kipo Memorial Lecture. And everybody was asking, why Enugu? And this brings me to the question, why Obosi? <laughs> he asked me the question, why Enugu? 
And everybody kept asking, why is the institute in Enugu, African Institute for Applied Economics, why not Lagos? Why not Abuja? Because the main of foreign institutions, uh, international donor agencies, all of them are in Abuja. And all the research that we did, okay, all the foreign institutions, the international foreign institutions, and the people we are doing research for happen to be Abuja based. But we decided that it has to be, okay, I do not buy it. And the mind, oh God, I do not think, I do not think. I do not think, 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 I do not think. And so let's go on about it. It's now the African Heritage Institution. You saw the, I mean, on my independence there. But that's in 2001. And when we had that Okibo Memorial Lecture and brought this Nobel laureate, he had just won Nobel Prize in 2000, and he was the former chairman, Council of Economic Advisors to President Clinton, and as well as the chief economist um, and senior vice president of the World Bank. I brought him because I also got him as a member of the board of that institute. So he came to give that lecture, and we brought the entire Nigeria and the world to a new on my permanent secretary, I remember, at the federal ministry, for whom that was his first time crossing River Niger into this part of the world. And I will say to you, Adazia, you have the network, the global reach, and national reach. Bring the world to, uh, to chief Mecca and uh, the annual center. Here in Obosi, was a bag and I have done a well over. But then you see an electron, you see a car, Obosi, I have done an electron, Obosi. Because if we don't say here we are, nobody will say here. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to believe that answer. It's not even a sin, I buy the mother who are here. But that's not only his first time. Those who came to buy us or give for memorial lecture. Many, that was their first time. At least, Joe Stiglitz came. All the way from the US, flew in and flew in to him. Took him to Milking Hill, took him to Obed, and took him to my young man, 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 Traditional food. You draw my driver, and then I will play traditional. All I went there, one of them, real food is ready. I went there, I went there, New York, New York, and I'm low fiber. I said, I have to have the soup. I said, I have to eat this, this is the soup. They put here. But Jeff, this soup will get out of the deal. Well, if I want to have a soup, I want to have a soup. So we must, and I'm very, very proud of this. I'm still to say, I'm, it, this personal story tells you how personally excited I am about this center, and that this center is not anywhere else but here in Ogosi. And this is what it is. Those who have to do the research, so Oluchi and the team here, you have got big work to do. I can see the areas of focus, democracy, the um, uh, climate change, diversity, because we must manage diversity. We must manage the diversity. Here in Anambra, in this part of the world, it's not too pronounced. The only one I had before, again, I don't know what this, uh, whether and uh, them, people think just aren't nonsense. Should not be the kind of discourse that we should be discussing. We should be discussing about what can you offer, who are you, not how you, what you, what I mean, and then, these things should not matter. 
they are first because there is no uh, denominational way of teaching mathematics or an Anglican or Catholic way of dying in a row. We must all get into one. And I want to appreciate uh, Lordship uh, Joe when he was the uh, uh, chairman, the state chairman of CCN. Okay? The uh, CCN, the branch of CAD. Uh, that recently last year are not being um, with an award. You know, you get all these awards, I don't pay attention to them. I have a class that will fill uh, room, hundreds of them. But this one, I, 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 I took it to heart when they gave me an award as uh, the father of ecumenism. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but this is what it's all about. And we must mainstream ways of managing this diversity. Managing diversity. Because you can't grow without coming together as a people, so to speak. And so democracy, maybe here we'll be coming down to send our people, you know, have our retreats. Uh, here, I just finished a two day uh, retreat of my, uh, my government, the executive. Um, you know, trying to think through and refine and to move, change gears for 2024. This is the only non-election year since I came in. Uh, 2022 primaries and uh, campaign. 2023 general elections and litigations. 2024 is the only non-election year uh, before noise away we don't have next year. <laughs> As of that, the politicians focus on elections. Statesmen focus on next generation. But I am more interested in <laughs> So we have work to do, and we're going to be this center, I want to believe, will be of immense benefit. Because it's all starts with the head. Um, 60, 70 percent of the success of anything starts with the soundness of the idea. And if it is sound, we've got to take it through. This center will enable us in this way. Also, yes, and I'm particularly also uh, struck by the fact that we're going to be supporting the less privileged uh, in terms of their education. Human capital is it? Human capital is very, very critical. That's why we want to pay attention to education, or free education, to our uh, youth. For the first time, our kids in public schools are getting true free education, not through the free tuition. And then you have cotton ladies and uh, the things to pay. No. Or the thousands of pregnant women now who go to uh, public hospitals and have free antenatals, free delivery. And so far that we have gone on this, and this is the good one, the thousands of people since we started the free antenatal free delivery in our public hospitals up to this last month, December, that has been zero mortality. No mortality. Uh, in because we must leave no one behind. And so human capital are quite interested. The system is as strong as the weakest link. And therefore, the issue of the less privilege that this center cares for them is one that we must celebrate. And let me say, uh, finally, um, this has to be said, but uh, for me, you can see from my personal belief, the fact that I'm governor of an number, this is a passion for me. That we need to have independent think tanks, independent institutions to have input into the way our society works. And I want to encourage all the others as well. Uh, as you did the fundraising for the sustainability of the center, we we'll encourage their businessmen and so on and so forth to donate to this because. There's nothing else to live for. I'm probably by the no champagne, more car, this. I saw one day my champagne. You know, because some of them just are left or they said I said uh, in Lagos, they said so we have a spine and crystal. So I'm a one of crystal, one then one. But it's a way go say they bought they go one bottle a week. Whatever your brand, 
save the amount for one quarter a week and return at the end of the year with the savings and go and see the primary school or secondary school nearest to your house in the village. You will be amazed at the difference that you make. Thank you very much. Donating those books to schools, you will never tell how far that that goes. And because in the end, it will be difficult to tell what your legacy will be. Uh, my angel told um, Oprah Winfrey, and Oprah Winfrey told this story when she was talking about her legacy. This is where I live. Said she was thinking, of, oh, I took this talk show and I talked to the world, millions of view my. Say, no, that's not your legacy. Say, I got this, I got that, bro. Say, no, that's not your legacy. And then finally, said, my envelope grew her attention to the school that she set up in South Africa. That Oprah Winfrey set up for black children, less privileged, and so on. And so, those children who go through that school, you don't know what they will get to become in the future. Which of them will invent or develop the idea that will save the world in the future. Therefore, you have no idea what your legacy will be. And I want to end on that note to say, and as a and you go man, you have no idea what your legacy, what lives you are going to touch, and how the lives you touch by this particular center will change society and civilization going forward. And in the end, you have no idea what your legacy will be. Thank you very much. Please, can we give him a standing ovation? That has been wrong. And I know my brother friend will hear the second lesson. My brother friend will say, Me name my profile to this, my name is Natalia. Mana, having said that much, I don't know how many agents who call the government of the government of the government of the government. And the India people are not allowed to run. Only the runner. Solution was that she will go down on her way to tears and eyes to the attention. I thank you very much. Each time we speak, each time we talk, we have to learn so much. Uh, you said that you want to dig out the magic on our brother's life. That's the magic. This is not fun. That's the magic. Anytime you marry opposite to me, hey, you come back. She will ask you 20 questions in a minute. Because you're a teacher. But here, to me, it's quite silent on assuming who's on the for sure. So, people go out of the America. So, don't find the magic. Don't find magic to the life of a man or a wife. You know what I'm saying? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It is time to invite our dear father, dear friend, dear brother, the chairman traditional reading council for honor prestige, the OB of our mission. To propose the toast today, we say Akazi of Questionary is 91. Many of us will still get to challenge, but all the same, let me invite His Royal Majesty to propose a toast for this icon of a leader, this protagonist of good education, even to the less privileged. Today, at his 91. Thank 
But first on my list is the grace of God. God has endowed our celebrant with good health, such that even at 91 years old, he maintains good physique and still retains his undoubted abundance of mind. This morning he shook my hand, and it was as firm as it has been in the last 20, 30 years. For example, and listen to this one, I was aghast when I was calling him on the telephone some years ago. He answered briefly to let me know that he was driving his car on the streets of London and that he called me back later when he got to go. I reckon that he was about 85 years old at that time. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> 85 years old, still driving in a crazy place like London. I surrendered my, my own license at the age of seven. But maybe I should go and make the But that's the man we're talking about. I don't know if it's still right. I won't ask him to discuss it. I'll consult him on that later. The second, uh, the second attribute is pain. His family was, was Christian, and I am like and blessed with the opportunity for early education, both on his paternal and his maternal sides. Our religious leaders of those days, and we pray still of today, such as his father, who was a catechist, and his mother's guardian, Reverend. Where the beacons for moral, ethical, and social values of society. One is thus not surprised that our celebrant has always stood fearlessly firm for what is right, what is just, and what is transparent. He doesn't waver from that and will speak boldly anytime, anywhere, what he believes is correct. And as we mentioned already, he's also very humane to and supportive of the less privileged. Third, his, his diligence and his excellence. I can say was effortlessly brilliant from his earliest days in school. Passing through his secondary school certificate examination with 10 subjects and grade one was exceptional in those days and remains exceptional too. Admission to the University College in Bath, which was the only tertiary institution that in the university level, was most highly competitive. Even as younger people, every year the admission list is published in newspapers. So you know who are basically. You can imagine that, uh, I don't know whether there were two or three hundred people the whole university at that time. So to get into university was very competitive. And you have to be extremely brilliant. But then, at university, the classics degree was the most solid. The classic students walked around with the halo over their head because they were the princes of the university, right? Right. So that's the man who was the And those attributes, his diligence, his excellence,
Meritocracy was the watchword in other sense era. Merit was a standard. But then, he was also fortunate to have the right opportunities at the right time and the right people who appreciated his work and encouraged him all along. This included our first Prime Minister of Nigeria, Elijah Sartafal Malewa, Mahomik, who was the chairman of CDC when he joined, and Mr. Arnold Smith, the first Secretary General of the Commonwealth, who had wanted him to, to serve uh, the Commonwealth Secretary. But let's face it, not everyone who was as brilliant or as brilliant as Chikameka and Moko has had a similar career trajectory. This is fortune, destined by God. And in my career in Shell, my own career, my director then kept pushing me up. Young man, I wish you luck. Young man, I wish you luck. And he kept saying that success in life was probably 60% or more attributable to love. I'll say a grand slide and then doubt. Thank you. Please let me finally share one fascinating but obscure knowledge about our celebrities, namely his love for the game of football, starting from second school days. I guess they had the habit of taking his then young children, and he uh, is here with us, to parks in London to play football, right? In 1978, he took his 10 year old son, Ubejina, to Ubejina's first football match, first football match at Crystal Palace, the game against Manchester United. And I wouldn't say what you said to him. But the point is that the bond between the father and the son, sealed by a common interest in football, has remained to today as they regularly discuss English football matches and decide which one to watch on television, wherever they may be at any time. That's the man we have to celebrate. As a tribute to his love for the game, he has for years been the patron of the American of under 16 interstate company. Football competition, the finals of which he regularly affects as much as he can with his friends and his family. Ladies and gentlemen, I have not said anything yet about Antigone, but since today is Ada's uh, day, I believe that she would prefer that her attention be devoted to her dear husband. It is worthy of mention. And both have been inseparable since their marriage of 61 years, in good times and during challenges. Like I said, Antigone, both of you have given sterling upbringing to your children, four of them, despite the travel demands of others' jobs. And may your love continue to radiate to as, as indelible examples to your own. Finally, please permit me to say a few words about my own connection with IDC, which started at the Commonwealth Heads of Government Conference in Durban, in South Africa, in 1999. I don't know if you remember that. When then I was based in London with responsibility for burnishing or laundering, if you might, if you choose to say, the image of the Royal Church Shell of Congress. Which are very sad. With regard to the Ugoni crisis in Nigeria, the fancy title we had was Managing the Group Reputation. My colleague, the Briton, and I, Conrad Chibayo, in the main conference venue, while he was busy attending to last minute details to make sure that everything was ready for the conference. And we impudently interrupted him and requested for our brief on 
from Shell, Nigeria, to be made available to the Tenkis in conference. In his usual, very formal voice, he boomed, saying, No, gentlemen, I have over 50 countries to look at, and I will not be distracted by the issues of one particular country. Then I quickly spoke to him in Hebrew, asking if he could see us, if he could see him privately later in his hotel room. The question of life, I think, personal uh, and in Hebrew language was, uh, was, was a surprise to him. When we saw him subsequently, he read in the words with unease, accepted that I could send him occasional briefing notes on the subject by email without prejudice. He never acknowledged or replied to any of my emails. But alas, one day I received an invitation to an intimate Thanksgiving service in London to mark his retirement. And the service he welcomed me very warmly and thanked me for all the perspectives that I occasionally in uh, availed in one Nigeria. With this, he got my emails at the red <laughs> <laughs> He subsequently also invited my wife and myself uh, to a very formal and exclusive farewell dinner in his honor at the Commonwealth Secretary. Unfortunately, we were there in Nigeria and could not honor the invitation. But the bonds of lasting friendship and mutual respect have been very well established, of which I have been a major beneficiary. I've learned a lot from his wealth and experience and his jocular stories from around the world, including good food and fine wines. <clears throat> One more connection. He was born at the end of hospital, and I was born at the end of hospital. Many years, many years later. Many, many years later. And let me also say, uh, Your Excellency, you did not know this, but uh, I'm also building an equivalent facility at the region. A museum, a museum, a museum and a library. The same objective, but a section of the tradition. Materials we got that from Richard Hendricks, uh, who did his, you know, all his studies and the world. <laughs> Finally, on the job element, I once arrived at Joyce Bond Airport from London, a young man from a South African immigration officer and said to me, Are you a Nigerian? I said, yes, I'm a Nigerian. That's my passport. He said, you know, Mecca and the Mecca. What's the connection? He said that the Mecca is a short version of the Mecca. Mecca. So he said to me, the Mecca and Chepe. Are you the Mecca and Noko or Chino and Chepe? Because you are the only two. So the only two famous Nigerians that we know in South Africa. <laughs> I said, I'm middle of them, and my greatest claim to fame is to share part of their names. So, and I said, On that note, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, please, may I uh, request everyone to chime in. I'm the
Niko abona ya na fani na ndo rasisia. Aika ukusikoni se foto. Kaime ka excellence ngeba ko ko.
Untuk biaya seluruh Agi DJ Agak con di con
Chief Adesia Obosi as the max this night one night day. And I pray that I go and he will live to enjoy the fruit of his labor. In Jesus' name. Thank you very much, the curator and his team. Please, I understand many people are itching to come and do presentation. But may I beg your pardon to please allow us, let others give us a word of thanks while we excuse Mr. Kamara for other exigencies. His Excellency, word of thanks. Your Excellency, <laughs> Professor Chukuma Saludo, Executive Governor of our state. And I must say, from his remarks, what I knew and know, he is the most celebrated of our governors in Nigeria. What distinguishes, distinguishes him is that he is not only cerebral, most cerebral people live in their own world. They live in the ivory tower. They seldom come down to the masters. But Professor Chikuma Saludo is a cerebral governor who is also at home with the masters. And for that, and for, for indeed, age 25, and to make his way to the he asked me if he could come early and stay until he left, and I said, of course he could. So I'm sure that he's probably still stranded at Lagos Airport. And your immediate predecessor, William Yanoa is in Ghana. He was hoping to come back from Ghana for this, but having not seen him, I'm sure that he could not make it. If Peter O'B had been here, I would have thanked him for being the third time is coming to my birthday celebration. When I was 80, an 80 stone birthday, Peter B was the governor of the state at the time, and he came in midwinter to a banquet that was hosted in my honor, Bishop Nigeria Anglican Communion. Most Reverend Nicholas Oko. Ninetieth birthday was I celebrated that early this year in Lagos. But eightieth birthday, as I said, is a milestone birthday because when you are eighty, you are considered departure lounge <laughs> associates would be that your flight be delayed as long as possible by Kugoma because it is said that heaven helps those who help themselves and so God helps them by his grace help me with the help also of my dear wife. Today's commissioning of this center is a fulfillment of a dream that my wife and I have had for many years. We have always wanted to support 
education of our young people and indeed also our adults. And by providing a library here, we hope that the library will assist the young people and the adults in acquiring as one of the attributes of Nigerians that worry me is the absence of reading culture. I don't know how many Nigerians will tell you how many books they have read in the course of one year. Not many, I would dare say. And my wife and I have also wanted to provide a museum a place where visitors can come and learn about memorabilia which we have collected from across the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth of Nations of 54 nations that are located in all the major continents of the world. We hope that the exhibits there will tell their story. And also, of course, we wanted to exhibit some cultural artifacts from our own country, Nigeria. Nigeria is a pluralistic country, a country that became one country only as recently as 1914, before 1914, the place called Nigeria existed in di different ethnic tribal groups that lived their own lives in their own parts of the country. And so, I believe that one of the major issues that this center will be promoting the study of, the discussion of, is the management of diversity in a pluralistic country. The leaders in Nigeria face. Nigeria has traditionally stood on a tripod of three major ethnic groups. The House of Fulani, the Yoruba, and the Igbo. But of course, Nigeria has very many ethnic groups and I hope that the challenge presented by the management of this collection of ethnic groups is one that our country should take very seriously. I sometimes worry that our political leaders are not as conscious of this challenge as they should be. Nigeria is not only is not the only pluralistic country in the world. We've had pluralistic countries. Some of them have succeeded, like Switzerland, which is a country of four major ethnic groups, or Canada, which is a country of two major ethnic groups. <coughs> or India, which is a country of several ethnic groups, these countries have succeeded because they have deliberately addressed the challenge of how to manage diversity within their country. But some pluralistic countries that were not able to manage their diversity have failed. Take a country like Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia was a pluralistic country doing well, but it could not manage its diversity, and so it ended up breaking up into eight states. There are now eight independent countries that used to belong to one country, Yugoslavia. And then you take Czechoslovakia, for example, another example. Czechoslovakia 
is a country of two major ethnic groups, the Slovaks and the Czechs. But they could not manage their diversity. So they peaceably decided to separate into two countries that they have become. And near a home in Africa, take a country like Sudan. Sudan existed as one country for about 3,000 years. And yet, lately, because it could not manage its diversity, it broke up into two countries. The Sudan of the North and the Sudan of the South. <coughs> So I hope that this center has uh, our most distinguished first guest, His Excellency Governor Saluda said, would be a hub of collaboration, collaboration with universities, with schools, and with institutions to promote studies in various <coughs> areas mentioned various areas mentioned in the mission of the the Mecca of the Mianoko Foundation if you Google the website of the foundation you will see the areas where the foundation uh, expects uh, to promote the study of The question was asked, why Obosi, the venue of this center? And the answer, my answer is obvious. It's my attachment to my birthplace. Over my 90 years, now 91, I have seen Obosi develop from being an ancient community of mainly farmers, but also a place that produced successful civil servants, successful teachers, and successful executives in the private sector. Obosi, I remember Obosi when there were no hospitals here. And Obosi was like villages in, take an example of Ireland, Ireland in Europe. Ireland before rural electrification. In Ireland then, births were mostly conducted in homes with the assistance of village doctor. And I tell you the story of one birth in Ireland <coughs> where a farmer's wife was delivering and the village doctor came to help the delivery and asked the farmer to hold the lamp. And then the baby arrived and the farmer shouted for joy. But then another baby was coming. The doctor said to the farmer, hold on the lamp. Because another man is coming. So the farmer held the lamp and the second baby arrived. And after that, it happened to be triplet birth. So the doctor said to the farmer, Oh, there's another man coming. <laughs> The farmer then tried to rush out to a room with the lamp. <laughs> and the doctor said, what on earth are you doing? 
come in and bring the light. And the farmer said to the doctor, Doctor, the light is attracting them. <laughs> I was one of those lucky enough to be born at Yale Mission Hospital. But, uh, and that was why, at my 80th birthday, I had said to friends and associates that those who were minded to give me gifts should instead monetize the gifts. And under the guardianship of my Lord Bishop on the Niger, the gifts were substantial enough for the committee to build a diagnostic center at the Yale Mission Hospital. For my 90th birthday, the, uh, I said the same, but with less force to my friends and associates. But they still gave something. But whatever they gave was invested in this center. So, my wife and I are very proud to have this center here. And as I said, I continue to thank God for his grace that at 91, he has enabled me to retain all my faculty. I think it was His Excellency the Governor who said that my faculty is still as sharp and so on. <laughs> I'm not so sure. <laughs> but what I know is that the absent mindedness which is associated with the old age, that I'm still free from that. <laughs> of a professor at the University of Nigeria in Sukha who had tutored the two brothers before the Biafran War. And one of those two brothers died in the war. And some years after the war, the survived brother saw that old man professor in the courtyard of the church and rushed to him to pay his respects and said to him, Sir, I am Okungwa, one of your former students at Nsoka. And the absent-minded professor looked at him and said, Oh yes, Okungwa, tell me was it you or your brother who was killed during the war? <laughs> and uh, of course, the man was alive. Perhaps I should tell you a little bit about the funding of the foundation and this project. All my savings and gratuity after 34 years of service to the Commonwealth was plowed into the foundation. In order to enable the foundation to build this place. And my hope and prayer, that's what I'm, uh, 
my wife and I are going to do it, is that we should be able that the foundation will be able in the future to have funds to sustain not only the maintenance of this center, but also its activity. And I hope and pray that that will happen. Sustain the activities into the distant future. When you tour the rooms, you will see that the museum is still work in progress because you will see spaces in the museum that are yet to be filled with artifacts uh, to be collected. Some are still in my house, in our house in London, but when we eventually bring them all home, and some are in our house in labor, when we eventually bring them all home, some of the spaces you will see in the museum will be fitted. I would like to thank you all for finding time to be here with us today. And as I said, I would particularly like to thank our cerebral governor for finding the time within his incredibly busy schedule to be here today. And of course, I'd like to especially thank Abogidi, the beautiful leader, for his very generous toast that he proposed for me. Abogidi and I have been friends for many years. Friendship that began in his days with Shell Company in London. And, uh, and so I want to thank him especially for his very kind words that he spoke about me. I'd like to thank of course, my Igwe, Ezo Busi, Igwe Weka III. I was installed in this year during the reign of Igwe Weka II. And this was about 44 years ago. As Ike Obusi told you, I am the oldest of the Obosi teachers. But before me, we have Iyasele who is here. And uh, Iyasele is the Prime Minister of Obosi. And it doesn't matter his age, when he is in Stockholm, Iyasele, he automatically comes next. To our presence. So, yes, and I'm very thank you. glad that you are here. Yes, I'm here. And I want to thank all the news you have received. Also, I would like to thank the news because um, they accompanied my friend. You were your beautiful uh, to come. On each other, Bushy used to have scuffles. But I'm very glad to say that since you were never got to be him your beautiful nature. Those couples, um, I believe, cease to exist. And I hope, and I hope, 
spreading hope before him and before my friend in Indian Church that that stability in the relationship should be maintained for the future. Especially thank my Lord Bishop, always more clear, for finding time to come, not only to come here, but also to lead us in prayer at the beginning of this formation. I know that I will be making some mistakes in not singling out individuals to thank. But I would like especially also to thank the only general that Robus has produced. And when I say, when I say the only general, I, I was secretary general uh, pushing the pen. <laughs> But we have a real military general, General Maduro, who is a but he's here. And I'm very grateful that you found time to come. And again, I'd like to especially thank my good friend. Or rather, our good friend, the Yel Yoba of Agule, is a title that I admire. Because it is absolutely true that when you throw a bar into the river, it never sinks. Same. Thank you and your dear wife for coming here today. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, 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 Mary has a, a special place in the history of the league. Just as I also uh, has a special place uh, uh, in, 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 in a history of me. I was hoping that uh, a retired AIG that you were to give
you are going to have as the first family director of this sector. Thank you. 